I have a new product here. Um, this was released very recently by HP, and it is called the HP Gloss Polymeric Overlaminate. Now, that's a partial title. I think probably a better title, a longer title, would be HP Gloss Polymeric Printable Adhesive Vinyl Clear Laminate because the material doubles as a clear laminate which you can laminate prints, and then you can take the exact same roll and then print on it. In this case, it has a perfect white liner, which is ideal for print and cut, and it's a clear, and there are presets that you can download right into the printer. A great product, works beautifully. What I want to show you here is how versatile the product is, because it has a couple uses beyond just as a laminate or as a printable clear film and it's both of those, it's also a clear film that would be, I think, ideal for windows. And here's why. It's a, it's, an, it's a clear film. It's not truly optically clear, but it will still work very well on a window. And what I'm looking for in a window is because a window is inherently translucent and light's going to go through it, I'm usually going to take the ink signatures and I'm going to raise them. So what may download would be, say, 12 pass, 120% density. And that makes complete sense if you're going to print this and then mount it to a white backer of some kind. For example, if you were to print it and then, say, as a reverse and then mount it to a white and then run that through a laminator and then die cut it and then you've got a white backer that would work very well for a window where you have solid white behind it. What I may want to do is I'll do like decorative work around the edges of a window, let's say a floral decor. But I still want to die cut it. I want to uh, use the um, HP cutter, the print and cut system, and I want to cut that out so that it has a beautiful, you know, it's not as a solid piece, and I can use the HP cutter to do that. But if it goes in a window, there's going to be light coming through the window, and so I usually increase the ink load so that it almost mimics a backlit, or almost half the way to a backlit. And here's how you do that. What I did is I loaded the material in, and then I created a new media. And you can use this on other materials as well, that are clear. This is just a very ideal media to do it, because it has this nice white backer instead of a clear backer, and so therefore everything reads a little easier. What I'm doing is I'm hitting new self-adhesive vinyl, and instead of generic adhesive vinyl, I'm calling it a generic backlit adhesive vinyl. You can do this with any generation of latex printers. You can do it with a 315. You can do it with this 335, uh, 365, or you can do it with a 500 series. The only difference is the 315 is not going to allow you to build an ICC, uh, a true profile, whereas the 365 and the 500 series will allow you to build an actual ICC as well. Now, ideally in these circumstances, you would take it off and use a transmissive spectrophotometer. I'm going to skip that and get just read it as a, as a backlit on the printer, and I think it's still going to give you sufficient quality, and it's going to give, most importantly, that ink load that you need to be able to put more ink down. But the first thing you need to figure out when you do that is when you open it up, and I've already kind of started this process and I've named it, so I've called this HP Gloss Polymeric Laminate, and I've built it as a backlit. And the first step is, and I'll hit modify and open this up, the first step is I have to print this chart. Now this is your cornerstone chart anyway for any printing, frontlit or backlit. And I chose 16 pass because I'm going to slow the printer down in order to put a lot more ink down. You can't quite see it, but there's 130% all the way down to 260%. Somewhere in there is your ideal setting when you put it in a window. Now what I don't know is how strong is the light through the window? Is it daily sunlight or is it just indirect light from room lighting? That could all have an effect on how strong you want this density to be. That's still a lot of variables. What I'm checking for is, and I built this at 16 pass, 230, 35 degrees Fahrenheit, I increase the optimizer. Instead of 12, I have it all the way to 30. And the reason why is, because I'm going to put such a large ink signature, 
I'm going to increase the optimizer, which acts as sticky. Just think of it like sticky. It has nothing to do with scratch resistance. It's not some magic formula. It adds sticky so that you can hold ink down on either an irregular surface, a smooth surface, or in this case, I'm increasing the amount of ink significantly, so I'm going to use a little more sticky to try to hold it down so I avoid bleeding. The three things you're looking for here are, is it bleeding? Yes or no? Does it have coalescence issues? Coalescence is effectively bleeding within a color. You'll see all this sort of fish-eyed effect if you're going to have coalescence. And then the last one, which is very important, is, is it dry at the maximum amount of ink that the printer is going to, that the uh, software would send to the printer? This black chart here represents maximum density. So at 16 pass, with no interpass delay, at 235 degrees on this particular vinyl, I am able to put dry 200% density down. I'm going to build this with a large ink signature just like a backlit. And then the next step, of course, I've already agreed that this is all there, and I hit continue. Then you would hit color calibrate, which as an adhesive vinyl selection, as a backlit, it will allow you to do. And that's going to color calibrate. And then lastly, I'm going to create an ICC profile on the 365. This is where on a 335 or a 315 or a 115, you would not be able to build the ICC. The printer will use a reference ICC that is in its memory on the hard drive for backlit and replace it and link it together. And it will, again, print fine. Your main concern is, do I have enough ink? If you were to build this at 110% and then you put it into a store window that has strong lighting coming through it, it's going to look washed out. And it's going to look washed out because you have what is effectively a translucent material in a window and that light cuts the color back. If you were to switch that same print to 200% and you put it in there, the colors are going to pop. You're still going to see through the window, but then you're also going to have this nice color pop because you put more ink down because you're treating it like a translucent or a transmissive uh, installation. The next step would be hit color calibration and then hit on a 365 or 500, you can do ICC. Those last two steps are automated. You don't need to do anything. But the main one that you have to understand, which is true for all latex printing, front lid or back lid, is I want to put some ink down. Do I put more or less? As a front lit, it's usually going to do 120% or less. But as a back lit, it's going to give you 130% or more. On the 500 series, there's intermediates, which are called vivid modes, which is going to be 130, 150, and those are more ink in frontlet modes. But you can always use backlit on a 365 or a 335, 315, 115, and look at the 130 or look at the 150, and at a slower speed, it may work fine. That's the key, though. You have to slow the printer down at 16 or 20 pass, especially on the 300 series, if you want to be able to put these large ink densities, which I do. I have a need for them on clear. So you can build your own preset here, which is what I'm doing, and then the next step would be hit color calibration and then hit ICC. Very simple. Once that's done, I now have two presets. One that was downloaded, which comes with this, which is directed for frontlit. The second one, which is I'm going to make, which is creating a backlit or an, uh, an intermediary or almost a backlit ink signature so that it would be more compatible with window decor and you can do all that on the printer. You don't have to have a preset. The printers, especially the 365 and the 500 series, they all have a built-in spectrophotometer to do the, the ICC and all latex printers have a device to be able to do the color calibration and key, this chart here is not device dependent. You're simply looking at it to figure out at this speed, your pass mode, at a temperature you've chosen, 235 degrees, how much ink can you put down before you overwhelm the media and it can't take any more ink? The other thing to look at would be along the front of the media, do you have deformation that's bad? In this case, this material takes 235 degrees very well, so there's really no issues. And that 235 degrees is a perfect temperature. 
I could always either increase the temperature if I wanted to put more than 200% down, or I could add an inner pass delay, which would also let, give me a little more dwell time and also would let me put more ink down. So this is the new HP gloss, and there's also a matte version, a polymetric overlaminate, which has dual function as a laminate as well as a printable film. And it's printable both as frontlet and as backlit or transmissive. Translucent is probably a better term in the window. And that film is available from HP. It's excellent. I love it. It's got this white liner, which makes it very easy to work with. And then also my cutters can see the back of it and can do perfect die cuts on everything. So it's ideal, ideal for window printing.